acceptable, says the president, but did the CIA drop the ball or are they being made into the scapegoat here? Well, for an AM breakdown, Jack Rice, former CIA special agent, thanks for being with us this morning. Great to be with you. So the suspect's father went to the U.S. Embassy to share his concerns about his son's radicalization. He apparently met twice and as well had multiple phone calls with embassy officials, including a CIA agent. So explain this process. What should have happened next? Well, this was a disaster. The president was right, by the way, to be angry. But essentially, it should have worked this way. Uh, after at least one interview or two interviews or multiple phone calls, there should have been a report uh, that was produced. This would have gone up a, essentially a chain of command within the agency at the embassy itself. From there, it gets sent to Langley. Now, at Langley, there should have been another process where it gets spread out to the intelligence community. This should have gone to the National Counterterrorism Center. This should have been pushed out. I mean, the problem okay, that wait, you so have let's, here... Let, let me ask you about yeah. that, because it says that this report then sat on someone's desk at CIA headquarters for five weeks, and that it wasn't shared, as you said, it should have been with other intelligence agencies until after the Christmas Day incident happened. So you talk a little bit about that breakdown. The first thing is this should have gone out immediately. Anybody coming to, let's say, an embassy and saying, I have some concerns about a fellow I know, perhaps someone I'm related to, that would immediately go out to, uh, to every uh, agency in terms of uh, analyzing terror? Well, see, that's, I think this is addresses where the president was really talking about. It's a systemic problem and it's a human problem. The human problem was missing the analysis. Just because they didn't understand why it was important doesn't mean it doesn't need to be spread out because if they had been able to, I hate to be cliche-ish, but if they had been able to push this out, they might have been able to connect those dots to synthesize this so we understood what it meant. So that's the human failure. But it's also about establishing a system that says when I get a piece of information that may be important, once it gets to Langley, it should be pushed out to the National Counterterror Center. It wasn't. That is a fundamental failure. So it's not just the guy on the front end in Nigeria or the chain of command in Nigeria. It's also what was in place or the people in place at Langley who didn't do what it is that they're supposed to do. So it sort of grabs both sides of the world and the, the intelligence community. Look, this is very frustrating for the American people because it's reminiscent of what we saw after 9-11. You remember where we simply didn't take the pieces of information and put them together in a way that made sense. Right. The and same thing happened again after billions of dollars. Right. And, you know, uh, I mean, and, and many have said this before, though, that we have to be right 100% of the time, and terrorists only have to be get lucky once. You know, I mean, we understand that Abdul uh, Mutalab's father never said his son was planning an attack. There was no magic piece of intelligence that would have landed the suspect on the no fly list even. So without any type of specific info, and you get these massive amounts of information coming in, how much attention can we really realistically expect? expect a report like this to get? Well, you're right, because you have to look at all of the information that comes in from NSA that goes to the National Counter-Terror Center in general, but what the, the, the agency, what the Bureau, everybody, what everybody picks up. That is true, but again, the whole concept of synthesis isn't to grab your little pieces of information and then hold on to them uh, like, like somebody who's just found, found a penny that they're not going to share with anybody. Right. They have to be able to take something, even if they don't understand it, and push it out so others can. I mean, remember, it's not just about this father saying, I have a problem with my son. You now hear about intelligence of a potential Nigerian who may be used to attack the United States who had connections right. to Yemen. And see, Guess what? The... Just that. Yeah, and that's the interesting part. So we had that little uh, bit of information that Al-Qaeda was preparing a, quote, Nigerian is what was known in one. Uh, there was also apparently some knowledge about any communications taking place between uh, this terror suspect and a known Al-Qaeda uh, operative or leader um, overseas. So you have all these tidbits as you're talking about. That was the point, right, of this uh, national, uh, the national um clearinghouse that we that we had after 9-11 that was put together, this uh, counterterrorism center, that was supposed to be there connecting the dots. So what use is that agency if other agencies are not giving it information to help connect the dots? No question about it. You think about what they did versus what the Department of Homeland Security did. I had a conversation just the other day with Tom Ridge, the first secretary, and that's what they do. Their job is to take bits of intelligence. They don't acquire it themselves. They get it from everybody else. But guess what? If you don't get the information, how do you analyze it? How do you synthesize it? If, if you can't analyze it, if you don't have it, then there is no point of having people in the field actually getting it. Gotcha. Well, it seems like there's a lot of a lot more questions uh, being raised and, and a lot more work to be done in, in how we handle this moving forward. Jack Rice, former CIA agent, thanks so much for talking to us this morning. Great to be with you.